Dear audience, our species are creatures of community. Mankind could only evolve by being connected. In the past, isolation meant death. But today, it seems to be different. Modern life allows a great deal of autonomy. But autonomy also carries the risk of losing connections, which means that very essential human needs are no longer met. Most people here have a smartphone. Imagine reaching into your pocket and it's gone. Many of your connections would be cut off. At least we are this phone. In the modern world, some people also lose their connection to themselves or to nature or to the world around us. But who finds this connection to themselves or to nature again can have a deep awareness of being one with the world. Being one with the world, this is what I experience with my work. I got an idea of this while I was in community service in New Zealand. On my flight to Wellington, I could have already guessed where my later professional journey would go. While I was looking at all the fascinating landscapes from above, I would have loved to say to the other people on the plane, hey, why don't you look out of the window instead on your smartphones? Okay, I just told you how important smartphones are to stay connected, so I also understand the other passengers. In New Zealand, I started photographing landscapes. But some things bothered me, like power lines were nasty in the picture. I noticed how humans shaped their environment. So I started to integrate these transformations into my photography. The fact that humans shape their environment is not new. Our relatives, the Neanderthals, they started doing this 125,000 years ago. They transformed a largely forested area in Central Europe into an open landscape. They probably didn't know that they had such a big impact. They just did what they had to do to live. But Shadir, light campfire, build shelter, and so on. They actually didn't do much different than we do today. Homo sapiens has gone even further. Historian Yuval Harari writes in his book Homo Deus that humans are the first species since the origin of life to change global ecology all by themselves. Harari and many scientists call this age the Anthropocene, the age in which humans have become the most important factor influencing our life. Everywhere, the early humans changed flora and fauna. Even before they planted the first wheat fields, before there were the first metal tools or the first coins, Homo sapiens had driven 50% of the Earth's large man mammals into extinction. But that took a long time, and no one could really see the consequences of what they were doing. Today, in our globalized world, everything is moving faster. But for the individual, changes still happen too slowly to be noticed in our everyday life. The power lines that disturbed me in New Zealand, they were the trigger for me to take a closer look into how we shape our cultural landscapes and the Anthropocene. But have you ever tried to look at something more closely yourself or in? If I'm involved in something and I still want to look at it more comprehensively, I need a different view. Maybe you experience this in your own life and you have your own methods of changing your perspective. As an active participant of the Anthropocene and as a photographer, I change my perspective by using a very far viewing distance. First, I had started taking photos with the help of drones. But for real change of perspective, I had to get up in the air myself. Now, please either think of your salted breakfast egg, of roasted and salted peanuts, or salted potatoes. Please do not wonder, just do. 
And now, imagine the salty taste of it. Maybe your mouth is watering. You see sea salt. To be precise, the production of sea salt. For me, this was my first photo flight. Humans have been extracting salt from the sea for a very long time. Seawater evaporates from artificially created pools. Those ones are in France and in the United States. When the salt uh, concentration increases, microorganisms that are in there change their color. If your breakfast egg or your potatoes or your peanuts are salted with sea salt, be aware, you are also shaping the Anthropocene in your everyday life. But there's nothing wrong with that. Even when the salt industries is changing large areas, the salt marshes and pools are still important habitats for shellfish, birds, and microorganisms. So please note, Anthropocene does not mean by default that human changes are good or bad. And this, does it show a good or bad Anthropocene? Beautiful for some, but bad for others. If you put your smartphone charger into the socket, the power may have been generated from what you see here. That's brown coal mining in Germany. Coal is still one of the most important energy suppliers, but it has consequences. Huge landscapes are changed, people lose their homes because they're relocated, and the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide is released into the air. Around 2022, every third battery charge is coming from coal energy, whether it's for smartphones or for electric cars, which look clean at first glance. But different energy sources are on rise. A high tower, more than 10,000 giant mirrors. The sun's energy is concentrated so that in the end, electricity turbines are driven with steam. This is an experimental solar power plant in the Nevada desert. Actually, it was not this. Unfortunately, its efficiency was too low. But that's no reason to give up. In California, there's a similar power plant that works very successfully. Okay, so from the heat to the cold. The Arctic is not seamless ice. The ice cap contains thousands of rivers and lakes through which meltwater flows over the ice passes through the ice and flows towards the ocean. The bright surface of the Arctic reflects most of the sun's energy. Darker land or water becomes visible where the ice melts. At the dark spots, less solar energy is reflected and more ice can melt, which again creates even more dark spots and even more ice can melt. The polar caps don't care if you eat sea salt, but they do care whether you use energy from coal or from the sun. For example, to charge your smartphone batteries. Speaking of batteries, here you can see how one of the most important resources for rechargeable batteries is extracted. Lithium. Groundwater containing lithium is pumped into huge pools. Those ones are in Chile. From the turkey's pool to the yellow pool, it takes around one year. As important as rechargeable batteries are, some people do not see their connection to its origin. 
and here the exploitation of resources in other countries. Because of that, we should stay open to new and even better solutions. But because everything is so interconnected, you can't make a generalized decision of what's good or bad. That's why I'm not telling you what you should do or what you should not do. Then why am I showing you these pictures? First, I want to give you a change of perspective that is not straightforward to everyone. It sometimes takes more than two years from the first idea to the finished photo. There's a lot of research. I need permissions to fly over certain areas. I need airplanes and helicopters, and I also need a very skilled pilot. He must be willing to follow my instructions. Usually, the helicopter door is open. Um, it, it can also be very cold. And I also have to stand against the wind of the rotor blades. It's almost po impossible to keep the camera steady. Actually, it's the worst environment to take pictures. In the end, it's only a few seconds when everything comes in line. But when everything, from the first idea to this very present moment, comes into connection, my visual heart rises. And secondly, I want to show you how connected you are to everything in our world. Earlier, I described this emotion of being one with the world. And maybe you can feel it through these images. And third, I want to show you that you have an impact. Everyone shapes the Anthropocene, even if he or she doesn't realize it. When you put the smartphone charger into your socket, you are shaping the Anthropocene. Just like the people did in the Stone Age. Not out of bad will, but because it's our life. Mr. Georg Gerster, the famous pioneer of aerial photography, once said, height provides an overview, and an overview facilitates insight, while insight generates consideration perhaps. And you decide all by your own how to act. And the change of perspective may help you to make even better decisions that are good for you, for us, and for our planet.